microphone there, but never mind. It's taken us four hours to get ready. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I said you're dressed down, yeah. Was, was I right? I mean, was, was that really what you were after, to try and provide initially an alternative to the, the, no, the, the gloom of punk music? No, right? really. I think we, uh, punk was kind of a revolution against what uh, the 70s was becoming so boring because the 60s, 60s had kind of finished it all. And the 70s had nothing to offer young people that was anything new. Um, punk threw it all away, but gave us the attitude that the most important thing about being in a band was the ideas, and uh, not how much expensive equipment you had or how fast you can play your guitar. So in a way, it gave birth to us, really, um, as a new generation. But ideas as against image, Gary? There were, there were a lot of ideas. I mean, I think one of the uh, main ideas, the ideals of the pal punk thing, was that the band should actually have control over their art, and uh, instead of being controlled by the music industry, and, uh, you know, we were one of the first bands to actually put that into practice by actually sort of, we had uh, made the decision when to release singles, what our artwork was going to be, how we re were represented in videos, etc. The, the, imi the image thing for us comes is, is not a contrived thing really, but it comes about the fact that this is a visual generation and uh, we moved pop culture into a multimedia art form that used TV and, and magazines creatively just for, for our, an outlet for our ideas. But there seems to be, John, there seems to be a, a bit of a catch-22 about this, that you can only start to dictate what you're going to be and what you're going to do and what you're going to say once you're successful. Um, not necessarily. I mean, we were one of the first bands to actually dictate to a record company. We went to the company and said, this is what we want. And now, in Britain especially, um, bands dictate to record companies, which is how it should be. We're the artists. They just provide the money. But off the top, we doesn't the record... Pardon? We spend it. You spend it. <laughs> Off the top there, doesn't it? Uh, isn't the record company simply going to say, listen, um, we know this business better than you do? Uh, that, do that, 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 you see, that happened when we first went, <laughs> but so much, they were proved so, so, so wrong in a way, and that, that our ideas were so new. I mean, there was a big difference between our generation and theirs, and we grew up watching TV. That was the main thing. We had a whole load of new ideas, and we were pioneering in a new art form. And, uh, and they learnt a lot from us. Now, the irony is they come to us and say, how about doing this, is the, the things that we told them four years ago. And we say, I'm sorry, things have changed. We've got new ideas now. Yeah. Do you find people reacting, in fact, is there a sense of pomposity about suggesting that this is a new art form? Is it a new art form? Pop culture is an I art think form, it's I think. expanding. I think it's expanding. I think what we're doing is utilising the things that we've been used to. For instance, I think TV is one of the most important sort of art forms. And, uh, and it, was, it was a natural thing to actually go into making videos and elaborate videos and trying to expand that, era, uh, that area. And that's what we've been trying to do. It's, it's like the music business becomes very conservative and every now and again you need a band like ourselves, I think, to come along and suggest new ideas and try and shake it up a little bit. And, uh, you know, that's what we've tried Mate, to do. The main thing is, is that back, there wasn't any bands to represent young people in the 70s, really. The 60s seemed such a great time to be alive. The 70s was just a hangover of the party. So now we're back where, where young people, are, bands are fairly young again and, and there's no middleman anymore. It's did, straight from the youth to us. Well, did it start, as I read, did it, did it start with the clothes, <coughs> the idea of the image, of no. the, of the, the dressed-up no, group, no, and then the music followed? We've been wearing clothes all our lives. No. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a perfect you heard guidance of, thing heard on the screen first. if we were. No, clo clothes to us, and, and most kids, I mean, in Australia or wherever in the world, are, are quite natural. I mean, when you... When you get to 12 or 13, you want to start dressing up and um, attracting the women. Yes, but most of the other kids didn't. I mean, at the time that you were growing up in England... No, that's not necessarily true. England's uh, been a poor country. Youth culture is very important because it gives kids identity because they haven't got necessarily material things or, or jobs to express themselves through. So youth culture gives them a means of self-expression. And uh, as we were saying before, the band should just be a logical conclusion of that and expression for them. But did you decide, look, we're going to... Apart from the fact you've been wearing clothes all your life, did you decide that we're going to dress up, look no, good, and no, then the music no, came was, later? No, it was a natural thing. I mean, it wasn't sort of, right, let's shock the world and wear some outrageous outfit. It was, you know, fashion is an ongoing thing that changes every, every few months. And we were just involved in that before we were even in a band. And it was a very natural we're, thing we're for not, us. We're not, so we're not talking about sort of middle class bourgeois uh, fashions. We're talking about the kind of fashion that, that makes a black kid in Harlem who can't afford to buy expensive clothes. But that kind of fashion that gives him a uniform so he can be identified with other people, uh, other peers. Yes, and as, I mean that's not cheap. And that was it? what the same. That was the same. Oh, well, it's the same it street have fashion, fashion, isn't it? I mean, when we got. were kids, I mean, we used to save our pocket money up and buy things like Ben Sherman shirts, which were very fashionable at the time. I mean, it's 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 really just pooling your resources together. You know, you aunts send you a fiver every Christmas or whatever, and you it's save not, it for a while and then buy a nice outfit. It's not the only thing. I think the thing is, young people just look for a means of self-expression. They can't necessarily find it in a job or necessarily, or even in material things, but they find it in maybe 
in, in some ridiculous coloured clothes they wear, the way they cut their hair, or, or sport, or music, or, or even starting a family, mm. but just anything to express themselves through. And pop culture is, is the, the most immediate way and the best thing for young people to do that in. It's also very much a rebellion thing, especially against your sort of parents and that, when you're about 15, 16, you know. You know, you're under your parents' wing for such a long time and you want to kind of break away from that. And uh, getting into sort of, you know, into a particular uh, fad, whether it be, you know, what, punk or whatever, uh, you know, it, it sort of alienates you slightly from your parents. Well, but I can't imagine... You that sense of individuality, which I can't I imagine important. you'd be, I mean, looking like this, you'd be alienated from your parents as against a skinhead or a punk or someone like that. I mean, the kids, I would imagine you parents would love to see you. Well, you just saw the first video, us wearing skirts. I mean, <laughs> no, believe me, my mum's chased me down the street a few times. You're not going out yes. like that. Yeah. What, what sort of, have I brought you up in all this business? Yeah. Really? Were you musos before you hit the scene? Were you, yeah, we, we dabbled, yeah. I mean, Gary's been writing stuff, you know, since he was, you know, 10 and 11, and uh, everyone sort of dabbled. When the idea came about, you know, it was... Um, yeah, let's do it, you know. I think we've proven ourselves as musicians playing live now. Um, but the thing is, for us, I mean, I get just as much buzz out of a camera, I mean, operating a camera, as I do out of operating a guitar. Um, they're just different languages to use to say things. Do you think especially the, the video clips? Yeah. yeah. I mean, video clips for us aren't promotional devices. They're creative devices. They're, you know, we can, say just, we can say so much in a video about a song as we can on, on a record. And also, we're the directors, which is the most important thing. Can you believe people actually pay you to do, have this fun? It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what about you? You mentioned your mum's earlier. Your mum's proud of uh, yeah. the working class boys made good now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're our biggest fans, as usual. They've got all the platinum records on the album, on the uh, wall. So, uh, do they say uh, it's nice to see you dressing proper? Well, I mean, sometimes they disagree with what we wear. <laughs> they still have a go at us. But, yeah, I don't they think they like proud. reading about some of the sordid lifestyle that we lead in the, <laughs> in the national newspapers not, in England now and again. Mm. Tell us about the sordid lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> read the newspaper. Listen, yeah. I'll invite you to the next party. Don't worry, Ray. I know you've been going to the party. How do you stay? Obviously, at one stage, it's, it was fattish. I mean, the attention, you got attention because you were different. Yeah. How do you stay one step in front of them? Make good music. Yeah, I think, I think we're, you know, sort of forever trying to be original. It's very easy for bands, especially when you get to our position, to kind of formularise your music and what you actually do, that, you know, all the things that surround that. And we've always tried to look at things differently and be very open-minded and just try and be original. I think that's why we've maintained the fans from the early days and also expanded that. Also, I, don't think also, I think playing live is very important. I mean, yeah. to get over to Australia now and to actually meet the kids who've been buying our records for four years, um, that sort of contact is... is very important for a band's longevity. That's just the most important thing. I mean, also, someone said to me the other night he thought the production was quite big in, in the uh, entertainment centre. Well, I actually think the production looked big because it was the entire place, you know, it included uh, 11,500 people. That was our production because everyone was up and everyone was, in, was part of it. I also think that the other reason thing is, is not to uh, become some sort of egotistical recluse like you're Rod Stewart to this world but to still try and keep your feet on the ground and to uh, make your influences uh, relevant. I was going to ask you, how, I mean, how you do that? The fact is that now you're very, very successful. Mm. Now you need the entourage, you need the bodyguards, you need these things. I mean, is it possible, without being coy, is it possible to go back and see mum and dad, to go back and see oh, the, the God, boys yeah. in the block? Yeah, it's yeah. still, it's, I mean, when we do get back to London, we do pretty sort of reasonably ordinary things anyway. I still like going to restaurants and... It's hard yeah, though, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Things, are, things are different, you know, but it's not, not as easy as it was. As I mean, as you, can. you do tend to get a lot of attention from people in the street, you know, you walk down and people are twisting their necks backwards and say, God, is that Tony Hadley that just went Yeah, back? I thought you looked much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you mentioned video clips. Let's take a look at just a, at your latest video clip. <laughs> now, you were... You were all involved in the British uh, Ethiopian record, the Band Aid record. Were you happy with what's happened to that? Yeah, yeah that was, so. um, I think the thing is, is that uh, we all pay a lot of money in taxes, but I actually, I don't think personally agree in, in the way it's distributed uh, and approve of the way the government spend their money so much. So it was our opportunity to uh, a time when the more money is uh, made by the record industry than any other time of the year to make sure that the majority of that money went to a cause that was apolitical and that was also worthwhile. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, I wonder whether you, we've had lots of reports, there of course. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Just to prove he was on it. <laughs> reports since then that the, uh, the money isn't going necessarily to the people no, it, there. No, it is. Uh, Midge and Bob have, have, have been, been out in Africa actually making sure it gets in people's mouths. 
which mm. has been their ethic all the way through. And uh, you know, I mean, they've been fantastic. I mean, most of the credit should go to Bob Geldof for actually getting the thing together. What did you think when, when Bob first contacted you? Well, you think I thought it was, it was impossible. I mean, I thought the calls was good, and I said, yeah, we'd be very, we're very sympathetic to it, but we're actually going to be in Japan when it's happening. He rang me three times in Japan, and then we, I said, well, look, I'm going to go to Germany now cause to do a TV show. He was going to do a TV show with Duran Duran. So we was in Germany, he rang again in Germany. So I said, we, how are we going to get back to England to do it in time? So we actually rented a, a private plane, and we got there. But it was only the enthusiasm of, of Bob's that but you thought, well, this has got to come together now. And when we arrived on that Sunday morning, and every major ego in, in British <laughs> pop music was in that room together. It was, uh, it was an amazing thing, you mm. know, all the sort of superficial bitchiness that goes on in the music business was all sort of made look, to look very stupid, you know. Yeah, we actually found out, we found out we got on very well together. I think one of the nice things about that was that in our position, yeah, we are financially well off, but it was nice that everyone got together and pulled their resources and their talents and actually did something that was going to help other people. I think it's the first time that, you know, a, a Something as big as that has ever happened. And we raised more money than the British government. So. Yeah. <laughs> they were the only people who made money out of that record, actually. Yes. British government. Yeah, it was an extraordinary venture, actually. A great one to pull it off. Now, you've got, uh, you've finished in Sydney, but you've got uh, three more capitals to go to. Brisbane. Four. Four. Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, Melbourne. Yeah, that's right. And it, in yeah. that order. And then we're actually coming back to Sydney for, for some time off because we need to do some writing. We've been touring since the uh, beginning of November. And uh, you know, you don't get a lot of opportunities to write, so we're going to spend some time in Sydney because it's a nice place. All right, thanks for your time and Thank uh, thanks for your comments. Thank Would you, you please thank the audience? <laughs>